Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my fiance. Dr. Frank Powers. Well, Frank, before we get started, I wanted to mention to our audience that we got a new book coming out. I'm glad you're going to mention that. Yeah, Open to Love, The Secrets of Senior Dating. And we want you to know, those of you who had a loss, it's going to be wonderful information for you if you do decide you want to start dating. And we had a lot of fun writing this book. We did. It was and about our relationship and about life. Yep, and about life. So the book's going to be come out on Valentine's Day, but you can pre-order it at Open to Hope or The Dating Doctors. And we are The Dating Doctors, I should mention that, with our jackets on. And uh, also, 100% of the proceeds are going to the Open to Hope Foundation to, with the mission of helping people find hope after loss. Well, we've got a great show today, Frank. I'm really excited. Yeah, we've got some great guests that are going to yes. be on, and we are going yes. to talk about the ups and downs of dating after loss. Yes. Important topic. So we've got Don Nargi. Hi, Don. Hi. With the W Connection. And we've got Eliza Martin. Marlon. Marlon. Yep. Marlon. And she's also with the W Connection. I'll just say quickly something about that. Um, it's an organization uh, online, so you, if you're a widow, you can come online and join, but you're in New York with groups, right? Yeah, we're, we are a virtual organization and an in-person organization, so we're across the United States and also in Australia and Canada, and then we have five in-person groups across the United States. So we're expanding the in-person again. Okay, great. Well, Don, I want to talk to you a little bit about you. You're the executive director of the W Connection, an organization you co-founded in 2009 after the death of your husband, Norman. You're committed to providing better resources for women to rebuild their lives after death of a partner. And you've been featured in prestigious media outlets, and you're currently writing a memoir. Yes, wow. I am. Oh. And you're also an adjunct professor. You teach technology and non, uh, nonprofit management at various universities. All right. And so, Eliza, you're a widow. I am. Whose early career was spent in musical theater actor. Wow, I love that. Where you met your husband, Gary, a theatrical electrician for Broadway. And Eliza manages Global Creative Art Awards and serves as a vice chair of the board of directors of Adult Congenital Heart Association and as a GEM, a GEM volunteer with W Connection. So let me, I just have to quickly say something about it. I mean, you're amazing and I want to talk a little bit about health as we go on in widowhood because you've actually had some heart issues yourself. I have. I was born with a congenital heart defect and I've been followed by specialized care. I'm very lucky to live in the New York City area my entire life, but have been followed in specialized care my entire life. And, you must um, be doing a good job. You look very healthy. <laughs> Thank you. My doctor says I'm doing well, so yes, I feel good. And our next guest is our good friend, Dr. Barbara Hopkinson. And Barbara's been on our show before, I guess on our... Uh, yes, she has a very popular podcast <laughs> she that <does>. we have. <laughs> and she's got uh, some things about her in the book that are going to be really open to love, the secrets of senior uh, dating, that oh, you're yeah, going to enjoy having her share some of her life with you. It's been <laughs> fabulous. Well, she's a speaker and a best-selling author whose husband, Jim, died of a heart attack. Barbara's the co-founder of Butterfly's Journey, and we see her at the Compassionate Friends all the time because she yes. does these wonderful tattoos on people's arms. <laughs> so, yes. of, well, of, uh, what it's, face, it's faces of resilience, photo yeah, shoots, and they do wash off. Yeah. And, and people talk to, the, talk to you about what... It's, it's about open expression of grief, loss, and love, so that we encourage them to express themselves about their loss because they often don't get to do that, so it's cathartic. And then when we professionally edit the photo and send it to them, it's a catalyst for them to talk about their grief with their family and friends, which is very healing. And they're fabulous, and they're so beautiful. Nice. And the pictures you do, and you have a wonderful book with pictures in it. Yeah. And you've received several awards, including an honorary doctorate in humanitarianism and mm -hmm. a President Biden Lifetime Achievement Award. And she is the author mm -hmm. of A Butterfly's Journey, Healing Grief After the Loss of a child, and that's this beautiful book with people's pictures in it. So, Thank so you. really amazing. So we're some gonna, very talented women. I know, aren't they wonderful? <laughs> so I'm so excited. Well, we're going to talk about the ups and downs of dating after loss. Wow, have you all dated? I have not. 
All yes. right. You have not. not so you're going to want to know about the ups and downs. That's right. I'm going <laughs> to seek advice from everybody here. All right, <laughs> Eliza. What's your first question for them? Oh, my first question is, is so did you feel as though you had to put yourself out there and in the environment, or did you also feel as though it just kind of happened and surrounded you? Would you like me to answer that? Sure. <laughs> you definitely have to put yourself out there. Mm. And I remember, and the other trick when I first, because I've gone through two phases of it, once after a long-term marriage divorce, and then the other after being a widow. Mm -hmm. And the first time I felt um, I was needy, and it was like a repellent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, once I figured out that, no, no, you're going to be OK and stop being needy, and then it started to work better. But yeah, you definitely have to put Could yourself out there. Could that be, it started to work better because we talk about in the first chapter of our book that mm -hmm. you need to know who you are and tell people what you want. Yes, yes. yeah, that too. But you yeah. know, at first it's hard, especially if, if you were you know, with one person for a very long time. I was married for 30 years the first time. It, and I was like 51 or something when I started you know, reaching out and it was kind of scary. You I, know? You've got to tell them how, what the guy did. <laughs> The, Which the, one? You got in touch. You're the one who came and did your plumbing. Oh, well, that was my second husband. Yeah, okay. I know. Right. So, but you so, met so him online. Didn't I, you? I did. I met him on Match.com. That was after I was a little more practiced, right? That between husbands, and um, I actually we were we were we were starting to talk through through Match.com, and and we were talking, and I was kidding him. He was he was. Um, his emails were very short, so I was kidding him about being computer illiterate. And, he, and I was saying, that's OK, I'm plumbing illiterate. My, my sink <laughs> failed, you know, the, something broke. And I couldn't, I've been to four stores, I couldn't get the parts. And he showed up with, he, he owned some property, he showed up with his handyman that day. So our first date was him fixing my kitchen sink. I and mean, then he took me out to dinner that. that weekend. He's a very smart <laughs> man. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> totally handsome, too. He was six foot nine. <laughs> yeah, really, right. really. So, so Don, have you nine? been online? You know, so it's interesting. I actually, I didn't put myself out there. If you think about uh, when I was widowed, um, I was suddenly widowed when my son was three months old. And that's how many years ago? That was uh, 15, 15 okay. years ago now. My son, is, my son is 15. So for me, um, I think I am living a Hallmark original movie. So hmm. I might have put myself out there for all of five seconds and I, I think I was trying to do the online dating and I was like well this isn't working for me and I probably would not have brought anybody into my home mm -hmm. but um, I grew up in a community that was very close and my high school boyfriend asked me if I needed help and I kind of thought he was looking to date and I was like oh my God, you, you don't really know what's going on here. I have a baby whose diaper needs changing. I have a dog that needs to go out. It's really not a lot of fun here. And although Stephen was not widowed, he had lost a lot of family members. His dad died when he was 13. Mm, sounds like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his, his brother sadly was murdered when mm -hmm. we were in our 20s. And oh, wow. his mom died very young at 40. So I think he got what it he meant to go him. through he loss. Kind of so he really came loss. to really help me. Yep. And it was, you know, it just e evolved after, after that. So I, I didn't really do the online th dating thing, so I don't really have tips on that. But um, <laughs> I did do the Hallmark the original course. movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Frank, I think uh, when she's talking about this, you've been so understanding about the death of my husband. Um, I think it's because, partially probably because you're a therapist, but also your own experience. Oh, yes. It, it really made sense to me about where you were at and what you needed. And uh, our very first date, you said, you know, I'm really not all that interested in dating. I'm really doing this to get material for a book. <laughs> right. I widows. And I said, oh, my gosh, I hope that's not true. <laughs> Uh, dear, yes. So, you know, one of the things that is coming up so much right now is loneliness. And, um, you know, it's interesting talking to people because they're like, oh, my mother's so happy. You know, mm -hmm. she's, uh, she's been living alone and she's just so happy living alone. But if you talk to these women, they are not that happy living alone. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of loneliness connected. And I am always thinking, what do you expect from us widows? Of course, we are going to be happy when we're with you, 
because we want you to invite us out. <laughs> Are we going to sit there and cry, you know, at Thanksgiving or, you know, whatever? Not if you don't want to be invited back. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Nobody wants a downer Debbie. So here we are with our big smiles and, oh, Mother's been living alone and she's driving and she lives in her car by her a home all by herself. And, you know, it's like a badge of courage. This woman is this age. She lives alone. She drives a car. You know, and it's just uh, really kind of interesting. Eliza, you look like you resonate with that a bit. You know, a few things. One, it is almost a stigma to be brave, right? If you are, if you are categorized or labeled as brave, you have to carry that with you all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you got to live up to the expectation. Yeah, exactly. You have to live up to the expectation. You have to be the superhero with the cape. Uh, the other thing is, is I often think that it's not so much those big days when you're with other people, Christmas, the right. holidays, yeah. whatever it is. And those, you've been planning it and you're going to be with people. It's organized. Those days take care of themselves. It's the ordinary day. Mm -hmm. It's the Sunday evening when maybe you would sit down and have dinner together. Mm -hmm. That's harder. And it's, it's not necessarily the whole day. It's just a few moments. Right. But those few moments are so profound that they feel like days and weeks. Mm -hmm. My other thought on this is that the concept of being lonely is a, is a little bit of a label from other people. Mm -hmm. I look at um, my husband's family and they're extraordinary, wonderful. My family, they're all wonderful. I think they're worried about me. They're worried that I will be lonely because I am not with somebody and mm -hmm. I spent a long time with somebody wonderful. Mm -hmm. And those moments happen, but I think it's important that as a human to sit in them for a little while and understand them and figure out what gives you the most meaning. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I think you're ready to date somebody. Mm -hmm. Then I think you're ready to open yourself up to meeting someone else. Mm -hmm. are you feel, where are you in that spectrum? I am open to meeting someone. I, I certainly, I don't know that I necessarily need to look for somebody that I'm going to couple with for life, but I am completely open to enjoying my time with someone um, and starting any sort of relationship. I don't know that I'm looking at every one of my photos as a profile photo, <laughs> but I certainly am willing if there's a spark, if I meet someone. You know, when I met Gary, it was well before the idea of matching online or anything right. like that, or even going to bars. I worked in the theater, so you just met people and right. you immediately formed a kinship and lots of sexual tension in the theater for sure. Right. Um, and my life has changed, what I do has changed, where I find myself on a day-to-day -day basis has changed. So this practice that I recall is different. So now I have to kind of like find my new practice. Uh -huh. But completely open and willing to it. You know, one of the things that is interesting is that when you do go online, now we can talk about online because that, if you want to catch fish, you go where the most fish are, right? Mm -hmm. And online happens to be where it's at right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can look at it from that point of view. But I think once you sign up, we've found that people that we've worked with, once you put the money in and sign up, it changes your brain. Your whole attitude it changes. It says, I'm dating. You send out different messages. Mm. You go to a bar, you look around, you see who's around. You uh, don't go out in your sweats all the time, you know. <laughs> you're, you're dressed up, you're ready. Do you resonate with that, Barb? <laughs> Uh, yes, and, and actually, like when I'm doing even selfies, I think, okay, is this something I want to put on my profile? <laughs> you, you know, it does. It makes you think differently. Uh, yes. And, 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 and then you have to think through what is your profile, what do you want it to say, what do you want it to, how, to present you, right? But, but in, in short form, because that's a little and, harder, because you have to really you, net it down. Do if you, you don't. find that it, but the way in which you would have had a profile when you're 30 is different when you're a little bit older. Yeah. Because at 30, you want to attract as many people as possible. You get a little bit older and you say, you know what, I only want one. <laughs> yeah. And so and I don't need to attract all these people. In fact, I need to put out there exactly what I'm looking for. Right. And if you don't match this, please don't apply. Right, and that, that's very different because I went through that twice. I went through one 20 years ago after my 30 year marriage ended. Mm -hmm. um, and. And that was, I was in a different mindset then, in terms of, yeah, wanting to date, like you said, and eventually maybe find somebody, but really wanting yeah, to date want to build a and, and, and get, get into it and get used to it and exactly. get my ego back, right? Because yeah. I was, 
uh, it was damaged <laughs> in the process. Although we now, well, one of the things we say in our last chapter is post-traumatic growth. And you have grown from this. Your ego may have been, a, you know, a little touch, but you have grown. You've learned. You know what you want. You know how to put it out there. Yeah. You know, I, you were saying uh, that you weren't sure that you wanted a long-term relationship, or <laughs> you, you know, you really do have to decide when you profile that. If do, do you really want a long-term relationship, or do you want a short-term? Be careful if you yeah. put short-term with guys. Mm -hmm. I'd say. Yeah. yeah. But I was, again, 20, 20 years ago. you don't say that you're just writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, but well, I, but I, it was a different you know, situation. And, and now, more recently, I absolutely knew that. Before, I wanted to, I, 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 was, I, had, I was more patient with it. And, and now it's like, no, that's really all I'm interested in is finding somebody who, to be a partner. Yes, because that being said, you don't want to waste time. It's that's time consuming. Mm -hmm. Day, I mean, you do have to create time and space to date. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's really a very interesting point in that Gary and I were married for 18 years and we got to the point in our relationship where things are kind of good, right? We can buy some furniture and we don't have to worry about it. We can take some time off from work and maybe even vacation, right? We're kind of coasting, we didn't have kids. And so I'm coming off of a relationship that's in that phase. Right. Right. So, but I can't just jump into another relationship or move on to another relationship that's at that same phase. Mm -hmm. It has to have its own life, its own breath, and right. its own structure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it took time for you to develop that kind of connection with him, and it, it'll take time to build that kind of connection again. Mm -hmm. So you have to be kind of patient. And you have to realize that it's not going to be instant. It's going to take a little while to build that trust and that connection. You know, Don reminded me of something when you are with, you know, somebody you went to school with. When you start online dating, we have had a number of people who meet people in their neighborhood then because the word's out, you know. Mm -hmm. The word's out, I'm dating. Yes. The and moment, the moment you, you say that, well, you know, I'm going to try online and see if I can't find someone, it's amazing how, oh, okay, class I have reunion. this friend. <laughs> yeah, class reunion online, yes. you know, uh, whatever. Yeah, that's good. It's not interesting. Yeah. And I, even I asked friends, look, I'd, I'd love for you to inter hey, introduce hey, me. Exactly. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't work that way. Yeah, and have I'm your sure it's different every situation. The, the potential person. Yeah. I mean, because it's one thing that the online services really don't do. They don't do the screening. You have to do your own. They do yeah. a little bit. A little they bit. They do a little, a little bit, bit because I will tell you, we've been working with The Golden Bachelor a bit and uh, with some of the contestants on the show. And uh, particularly Joan has had so many people come out of the woodwork and all of them really? have been and, on the program, and people, yes. you know, they don't want anything to do with any of them. I mean, it's really, you know, so, so <laughs> I, I, the truth is they do screen. I mean, you do have, yeah. people have to fill out a profile, mm -hmm. you know, they, yeah. they have to put money yeah. in. They have some yeah. skin in the yeah. game. They don't, is, they don't just loose, read about you online screen. and suddenly yeah. pile on, you know. Yeah. But your profile is really kind of important so that you really yeah. let people know what you're looking for, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't want to please everybody, and so that's it. Our, our whole first chapter is on uh, knowing who you are, and, and then looking at what you liked in your past partner, and what you didn't like, and you know, making a list, and you know, so that you can get you know, what you want out of the relationship. Because that's one of the advantages you have when you're a little bit older, that you didn't have at first, you have some relationships. So if you say, these are the th qualities and the values that work for me, and these are the ones that don't work for me, and that's And you gives say, you really if you start. drink, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you aren't fiscally responsible, if you don't have a retirement fund or whatever, mm -hmm. I take care of myself financially, I expect you to take care of yourself financially. I mean, she you can put really in her put some profile about the fact that that person had to have a handicap if they weren't, and she met a golf <laughs> handicap. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Do you, I have a question. Do you, do you find that widows enshrine their, husband, their, their deceased husbands? Do you know what I mean? So that it makes it that much more difficult to find somebody uh, new? You know, my experience w w with the online dating, I think the women that I met online, 
those that have a wonderful relationship with their father, uh -huh. really good candidate, oh, okay? okay? And Very close to if they family. had a really good relationship <laughs> with their uh, husband or yeah. with the person they were with, that was also a really good thing. Yeah, interesting. I mean, you want someone who's, who likes to have a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> if you like to have a relationship, don't settle for That's someone right. who doesn't or has had bad experiences. <laughs> it's harder. I, I think it's harder, yeah. especially if you're older. That being said, we wouldn't have never ever married each other in the first place. Oh, no. We, if we met one another in our never. 30s, it, it wouldn't have it worked. worked. It mm -hmm. wouldn't have worked. There really are not as many men around as but there are But guess what? It's 50-50 online. It is. <laughs> it is. is. Really? Yes. Seriously? It wow. is. Absolutely. Yes. Well, that's, that really surprises me. Yep, it yeah. is. Uh, I, I would wow. love to say that the quality of, of the men go along with the, yeah. <laughs> the number of people Frank, on, Frank, online. Frank but there is some questions yeah, about Frank, that. Frank has great <laughs> things in the book for men saying, come on, get alive and yeah. get mature and you're not 30 develop anymore. friendships yes. and you're not 30. So, anyway. If you well, want to be respected, you've got to respect the person that you're right. meeting up with. So could you give us each give us one quick advice, piece of advice for a widow, if somebody who's widowed right now? Take good care of yourself uh, to kind of build your own confidence and then however you want to kind of get out there and slowly, surely, um, and you know, through friends or however you want to do it, just, just put your toe in the water because it gets a lot easier after you s just start. Great. And, and just do simple, you know, simple coffee, whatever. You know, Thank you. Sense. That's great. Because well, you're you. a real veteran now. <laughs> I you know. am, unfortunately, I am. <laughs> Eliza, have you got any advice for a widow out there? Uh -huh. I would say do what makes you feel best. Do something that's entirely for yourself and not necessarily about the legacy or the memory of your partner. And be indulgent and don't feel badly about it. Uh, thank Very you. good. You yes. I guess go to your high school reunions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the great thing about being with Stephen is that he knows my family. He met my husband. You know, I think it's also somebody who understands loss and is able to integrate um, the deceased spouse into, into your lives easily. So uh -huh. I, I think, um, yeah, go to those high school reunions. Yes. <laughs> well, I also wanted to ask you what the W Connection, before we finish, what have you seen with the widows that you've been working with? What have you seen the main main problems? You know, you know, I I think it really depends. You, you know, so all our meetings are are topic based. So you know, we may do things like dealing with difficult emotions, or we may do something like strategies for getting through the holidays. But then we, it's interesting, we do have this topic on loneliness, so we see that as well. But to Eliza's point, what she said, you know, when are those times that you're lonely? You're not lonely all the time. So the first no. thing is we look at it and we say, well, when we're all together, we're not lonely. Mm -hmm. I mean, this woman is a wonderful friend of mine. I love being with her. We're, you know, I have a boyfriend, but when we're with her, we're not lonely, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so we talk about creating this connected life and really saying, okay, at that Sunday dinner, this is when I'm lonely, but you know what? I love this community of women that I that I have. So, you know, that's one of the ways we look at loneliness, creating this connected life. With peer support. Peer mm -hmm. support's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Barbara, did you get peer support? Yes, I've met, yes, and I've got a lot of girlfriends, and it, it really is great. But again, a lot of my girlfriends, some of them are single and we do things, but on weekends, all the ones that are married are occupied. Like you said, that's kind of the lonelier times. And I am with family and things on holidays, which is good. But I'm kind of tired of always having to go alone to the family things when everybody else is in couples. So it, it's kind of a mix. Yeah, it's kind of a mix. But, it's, but I do make myself get out when I feel like I'm feeling a little down. I'll keep calling until I find somebody that will go do something with me. You know. Well, give Eliza the um, dating buddy pitch. Eliza, the dating buddy pitch. I'm ready. Uh, okay. Well, she's sitting next to you. Okay. <laughs> you, you, it's really wonderful. And it's really good for them. Because the more you teach someone how to 
navigate this period of your life, the more you learn. You, ha you have to relearn how to do this because dating has changed so much. So you need someone who's a real expert. There we go. <laughs> and the fact that it's so much more fun to do it with someone than do it alone. I, I think it, most it of the fun. people who do bit. not do well online they drop or do it and alone, get discouraged. And they yeah. go it alone, they have a few bad experiences, and they don't have anyone to enjoy that and make it into fun, okay? Because online has to be fun or you'll kind of move away from it because mm -hmm. not every date that you meet for coffee is going to be no. <laughs> the person. But the bad person. ones become really fun stories over a glass of wine with a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I that peer support is <laughs> absolutely yes, invaluable. Yes, yes. Having yes. a date anybody I think is, it, it, it's yes. whether you drop out or not of the whole situation. Yeah. I mean, we have a few people that are yeah, dating that, buddies. That we are dating buddies for. <laughs> it, it is fun. I mean, I am enjoying yeah. their and experiences. I, I actually made a friend with a, a guy that was, and, and he became my wingman. Yes. Okay. Right. So then I could go and go to like yeah, you know, concerts have to, and go to bars, have to be and it was safe, woman. and I yeah, did not have like right. a wingman. That's and then when right. I, if I was going into yes. like Boston or somewhere where I was going to dinner with somebody an hour away, I'd call him and it's okay, if I don't hear from you in two hours, I'm going to call you or I'll call the police. You know, it was just a safety thing, but it was uh, funny. We made a joke out of it. Well, thank yes. you guys for being on the show today. Yes, You've been, been great. Wonderful. And I think you have given yes. us some great ups and downs on senior dating. And we Definitely. thank everybody for watching the show. And we want to remind you that our book is going to be out. It's out on, going to be out on Valentine's Day, but you can uh, pre-order it at Open to Hope or The Dating Doctors. And uh, again, 100% of the proceeds go to the Open to Hope Foundation. And thank you, everybody, for watching our show today and being with us. And Frank and I want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. The loss of a loved one can leave you feeling depressed, angry, alone, lost. But you don't have to face this journey on your own. Open to Hope is a free community for anyone who has experienced loss. Find support. Find help. Find hope. Give grief a voice at opentohope.com.